And please join me in welcoming Ralph de Varnier, who's going to be talking about HPC on Intel um, hardware. Can you hear me? Or maybe I take this mic? That works? Okay, I can't hear me. All right, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this talk. My name is Ralph de Varnier from uh, Intel, <clears throat> actually, more Intel software because everybody knows Intel as a hardware manufacturer, semiconductor company, but it's also a very large software company. We are about 15,000 software developers at Intel <clears throat> who develop things from low level BIOS to uh, up, up to uh, high end um, big data solutions. And my talk today is going to be about high performance Python on Intel architecture. Actually, I come from more from the um, high performance computing, which is traditionally, um, the traditional language is, of course, Fortran, right? Intel, we have a Fortran compiler. Who is using the Fortran compiler? Nobody, that's good, thank you. And, okay, normally when I go to high performance computing, uh, specialized conferences, a um, lot of people still do Fortran, right? Because the, the code didn't change since 1960. And so it's still running. It's running really fast, and it runs on the latest architecture. But more and more, of course, people do C and C++. And, but what we saw in the past couple of years, since I'm in high-performance computing, is that more and more people are doing Python. So that's why I'm here, actually. So that's why Intel is in Python. It's no wonder. And... Uh, for the last couple of years, we also love Python at Intel. And um, so who here in the room is from high-performance computing or does some kind of high-performance data analysis, data, scientific computing, something like that? All right. Okay, who is using Intel processors? <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> who is using GPUs? Don't worry, don't worry. I will not. Uh, I like GPUs also. Right. Okay, so today I'm going to talk first a little bit about um, Intel architecture. Where where are we at the moment? And um, after that, I'll go into uh, what are we doing for the Python community to make uh, the the bridge between software development and our high performance um, processors. I will mostly talk about high performance processors like Intel Xeon or Xeon Phi, or even your regular Core i7 in your uh, Mac laptop, not for the embedded stuff. All right. So, wow. W what's that? Who knows? It's what? What is it? Xeon Phi. Wow. You can get a uh, T-shirt later from me. If <laughs> Xeon Phi. Who knows Xeon Phi? Who heard about Xeon Phi? All right, half of the room, great. So this is the latest Xeon Phi. We just released it end of uh, June. It's, um, it was called KNL, Knight's Landing. That's a code name. We love code names at Intel. So that's Knight's Landing. It has 72 cores. You can count them. Every core has two threads. And um, they're all connected through OmniPath fabric. So it's, I, we hope it's, uh, it's going to be a really fast system. So how does it look like in, in reality? So here on the, on the left, you have the version with OmniPad Fabric integrated. There is also a non-OmniPad Fabric integrated version. It's like a small cluster, right? You can imagine this as a, as a cluster with a high performance connect, connect between all the, the cores. And the good thing is, and the new thing with this Xeon Phi is that it's not anymore a coprocessor. This is the third, third generation. And until now, it was a coprocessor, so you had to plug it in in a, in, a, um, yeah, in a PCI slot, and then you had to, to pass all your data through this, uh, to this small slot, right? And then it, was, it gave you a lot of limitations. So the new one will also have a coprocessor version, but the, the version we just launched is actually a bootable version. So you don't need a host system anymore. It's the host and the, pro the coprocessor in one. So you can boot Linux on it at the moment. It can run a lot more uh, workloads than the coprocessor, right? It has less, less um, 
limitation. It has MCD RAM on the, da on the chip, right? 16 gigabyte MCD RAM, which is really fast RAM. And it, it can run normal IA code. So Python, normally it's IA code. So Intel architecture code is really easy to program. That's why it says programmability. It's power efficient, all right? It has a large memory, can, can uh, use per server up to 400 gigabyte, 384 gigabyte. And it's, it's really scalable. You can, you can build a cluster out of it. So like I said, there is a, there is a regular version without the, um, the fabric, integrated fabric. This one, this is the integrated fabric one, and it, it goes onto a host, um, it, it's its own host processor, right? So you can use it as a regular workstation, right? Currently, we have a lot of customers, software developers who, use, who have a regular PC, it looks like a PC, and instead of a Xeon or Core i7, they have the Xeon 5 processor in there. <clears throat> and at, in the, at a later stage, it will also be available as a co-processor, like a GPU card. But just to go back to a little bit more of uh, <clears throat> hardware. So in the high end, we have two processor families. We have Xeon. Xeon is the regular processor, which is boosts most of the, the servers at the moment. All the cloud, the internet, everything runs on Xeon. And Xeon Phi is our new um, processor targeted at high performance computing, but also big data analytics and machine learning. And the good thing is, it features, the, uh, it features 72 cores, right, with 288 threads, and it can run, it has um, vector units for up to 512 bits, so it can run AVX 512 extensions, which give you a really uh, great scalability if you're doing um, mathematical operations with uh, single instruction, multiple data uh, vectorization. And so this is what, what we have now, and the future is, will be parallel. We will have still more cores, so at least in the five, next five years, we'll go more cores, more threads, and more vectors. So that's going to be really essential if you want to have performance on your, uh, with your application in, uh, with numerical mathematics, at least in high-performance computing. Right? And the current version of Xeon is Broadwell, Broadwell this one here. It still doesn't have AVX 512, it has AVX 2 with 256 bit wide um, SIMD. The next version will be Skylake uh, with uh, AVX 512 on the server. So what does it have to do with Python? So as a lot of Python developers are using these platforms and want to use the newest and latest, they want to have performance. Of course, you are paying for all these, for all these transistors. <laughs> Right? If you buy a Xeon Phi, you are, you are buying 5 billion transistors. But if you run a regular Python code on it, you will not use 5 billion, process, uh, 5 billion transistors. But you paid for these 5 billion transistors. So we want you, we want, you, we want to help you uh, get more performance out of it and use all these transistors, for, especially for production, right? Not for prototyping, but for production. And, but we are also seeing that for normal... Uh, coders, it's really difficult to use these high-performance extensions. Even for us, it's sometimes really tricky. Um, so it's really hard to combine Python and uh, those um, high-performance extensions. So that's why this year, in two months from now, we are releasing our own distribution of Python, which, is, which is, will be called Intel Distribution for Python. At the moment, it's still in beta, and uh, it's going to be released in the first week of... Uh, September. Let me check the timing. All right. So, yeah, our, our aim is to give you, as a, a Python a programmer, easy access to high performance in Python, of course. And uh, so it's based on C Python. Uh, we recompiled it with uh, our low level libraries. Uh, for instance, the most important one is MKL. Who knows MKL already? Oh, great. So MKL is always at the forefront of performance. It's always optimized for the latest, um, latest processor technology. So, and we have been able to recompile it into our distribution, but we are not only using MKL, we are also using other libraries like DAL, which is a new library. 
It's going to be called PyDAL for Data Acceleration, no, Data Analytics Acceleration Library. Uh, it is also in there, and uh, also we are including TBB for parallel programming. So, what is required for making Python performance closer to native code? Of course, in HPC, it's always you want to have native code. That's why most of them programmers are using C++ or C or Fortran. And here it gives you a, uh, an example of uh, what's required. So there is a very interesting book that came out uh, two years ago from one of my colleagues about high-performance computing on Xeon Phi. It's called High Performance Parallelism Pearls. A lot of people are in that book are writing an article about uh, how they parallelize their code in high performance. So I know I took, uh, we took here a very simple example, which is the optimization of black shows pricing, right? It's really easy to parallelize that, that formula. And if you run it on pure Python, right here it's the, the, the number of options, thousand options per second that can be calculated. If you use pure Python, you are maybe in, for the same time frame, you are for one second, you can have like 100,000 per second. If you, don't, if you move this to naive C implementation, you can have a 55 times uh, performance uh, implementation uh, static, with static compilation. But if you, if you really use the hardware, all these uh, vector units, all these cores, whatever is included in the, in the Xeon Phi processor, vectorization, threading, and data locality optimization, you could get up to 350 times um, more performance. So what, what are we putting into Python? to make that happen for you without having you to code everything in C. So first of all, we are accelerating uh, the numerical packages of Python with our libraries, right? MKL, as I said, DAL, and some a little bit of IPP, which is more a smaller scale um, uh, library. We are implementing TBB for better parallelism, you know, to get rid of oversubscription, for instance, and in some cases also for MPI, if you're using the, um, the, the small cluster version. We are also having VTune, which is a profile. I, I'm going to show you quickly what, what that means. We are also optimizing uh, other uh, extensions in Python, like Cyton, Numba, etc. And we are also working on the big data machine learning platform and frameworks like Spark, Teano, Cafe, etc. So what is, what is in there? It's going to be MKL, so I'm repeating myself, but we're also optimizing NumPy, SciPy, Scikit, PyTable, etc. All that stuff, you have, I can give you a description of all the a really long list about what we're optimizing, what packages. Um, we are providing a specific uh, interface for DAL called PyDAL. It's going to be available through this distribution, and also it's available from Anaconda, so from Continuum Analytics as a Conda package. And of course, we like the, the open source community, the, the Python community. It's amazing now. I really like this community. Uh, it's amazing what happens here. And we, of course, we want to um, bring all the good things back to the community, and we, in the end, eventually, we are going to... Um, also optimize all the other packages of Python. So a quick overview of, at MKL, what is in MKL. So at the moment, for the first version, we are going to include BLAS, LAPAC. Uh, we are going to include uh, multidimensional FFTs, some vector mats, and uh, RNGs, which are random number generators, very strong random number generators, which will, can be used in like Monte Carlo simulation. Here an example of what can happen if you use uh, our uh, beta uh, version of uh, Python. So it's, this is a, a FFT implementation. Uh, you can see on the right side a comparison. If you use uh, regular Python, uh, if you change it with one thread or 32 thread, you can get up to 10 times uh, acceleration. Same if you use vanilla by Python here on one thread, a 32 thread can get up to five times acceleration. 
Okay, random number generators. Don't know if it's interesting to you who use random number generators. A few. So we, we really can get very nice results on random number generators, right? Up to uh, more than 50 times more performance than regular uh, Python. Okay, DAL, DAL is uh, optimized for machine learning and statistics and, uh, and uh, uh, big data analytics, so it has a lot of components, and we are currently working on really making that available to PyData, to a real Python library. So let's have a look at Vtune. Vtune is a low profile, uh, it's a low, um, low level profiler. Who, has, who is using Vtune or who knows Vtune? Vtune is um, an old product from Intel which we, are, which we make current every year. It's mostly used by C programmers, C++, Fortran to find hotspots in the code, right? Where is my hotspot? Where is my application running slow? Is there any performance gain I can, uh, I can implement? Am I using all my cores, all my threads? Am I, am I really, really using the processor at low level the right way? It's a very visual tool. It's, it's slow. Um, uh, it, it uses not much um, uh, of the performance, right? And it can give you visibility up to the, to the code, right? To the source code. So it, it pinpoints the source code where your hotspot is. That worked until now in uh, C, C++, Fortran, but we made it also available on, uh, on Python because up to now, if you would use Python, it would show you the C code of the library. So that was not in the intent, right? So how it works, here you have some Python code. Uh, it's it's some, um, something very simple. We have two, two uh, routines. One is slow and one is fast. That's easy, right? And we want to see if Vtune is able to run at the same time as this, uh, this small program and find the code that is slow, where well, we know which is slow, right? So we start it, it runs at the same time as your, uh, as your code. It can even um, analyze uh, the, the performance measurement units, the PMUs in the processor, and see what's happening in the processor directly. And so it shows you here, this is the result, it's very visual. Normally you have it on a much bigger screen, so this is a small screen. And it shows you where where in your code the, the, the hotspot is. So here, slow encode, surprise, it's here, right? Fast encode, it's okay, it runs fast. The slow encode runs slow. And if you click on this, you'll get directly to the Python source code. So that's, that's the goal. So Vtune is now available also for Python and recognizes Python code. And Vtune is really a... Uh, low-level profiling uh, tool, which uh, doesn't use a lot of overhead, like 1.1 to 1.6, works on Windows, Linux, and use, can use Python 3.4, 3.5, all the versions, basically. It's really a rich graphical user interface. It, I would not say it's easy to use, but it's, um, we try to make it intuitive more and more. It supports different workflows, so you can start your application start Vtune at the same time and wait for Vtune to end and, get, and analyze the results, or you attach it to an application and you only uh, profile a certain uh, area of your code. All right, so that's the end of my talk. I still have 30 seconds. So you can download um, our version of Python at the moment from Intel software, software.intel.com. It's still in beta, like I said, in the beginning of September is going to be released. Um, it, it's uh, really uh, supporting the full stack for high performance computing and uh, big data, machine learning, whatever. All right, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Ralph. Talk. Any questions? Um, in the latest processors, uh, you are starting to embed FPGAs. Uh, do you have something of that? Yeah. 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 So the question was about um, what about FPGAs? Intel Intel bought uh, Altera a few years ago, 
And uh, since this year is part of Intel, Altera, and uh, our plan is, of course, to, to put some FPGA technology in our Xeon processor going forward. Right? At the moment, I have no, nothing uh, specific to say about that. It's still in the, in the works. You mentioned machines that uh, have the Xeon Phi as the main processor. Uh, who's building these? Who's building these? Yeah. Uh, Where can I get one? You That's can get question. one. <laughs> so you can go to your local OEM and order them so they, they can take orders. At the moment, on the market, if you, we have the, um, the software development uh, product. So that the one I said, it's like a workstation. It, you can buy it from Colfax or from um, a German small OEM. Uh, I don't recall the name now. From, so there, there, you, you simply go on the, on the Xeon Phi webpage and you have the list of, there are two small OEMs who build this workstation. You can order them, it's like $6,000, one, uh, one uh, workstation. But other than that, if you want to have more more information, you have to go to HP or Dell, and, and they are building currently their, their offerings. And the Intel distribution for Python is only for the Xeon series of processors, also for others? It's for Intel architecture. So it, you can use it on a Core i3 or in a laptop. i3, i5, i5. i5. It's all the same, basically. Core i3 is basically the same as a Xeon E5 or Xeon Phi. The, the configuration is different, but the, the, the basic architecture is the same. That's why it's really good for programmability. More questions? We have a couple more minutes. And you go. So uh, I'll have one. Um, so the basic idea of the, the special Intel Python distribution is that you've just taken the exact same C Python source code and you've just compiled it with different flags which are going to magically optimize the way Python works, or you then have to also rewrite things like NumPy slightly to... Uh... No, we, we, as far as I know, I'm not the, the full Python expert. We recompiled C Python mm -hmm. using our low-level libraries like mm -hmm. MKL. So it, you should not... Ter uh, no, I'm not promising anything, right? Uh, don't <laughs> record me now. Um, it's, um, yeah, it should work out of the box. Thanks. It's compiled with ICC, right? It's, it's compiled with ICC, right? The Intel compiler. That's the plan, yeah. Okay. So we are, like, we, ICC is the Intel C compiler, C++ compiler. It's our C++ compiler. We optimize it to the, to the maximum, to what is doable, and we, of course, use it for ourselves in, uh, in, this, uh, in this case. We, but we also work with GCC, so we also optimize GCC. It's not that we're not, we love the open source community. Uh, now the question is, if I, say, if I have a library that's compiled uh, with GCC, if I have any issues with interfacing to it from the ICC compiled so Python? So theoretically, the ICC and GCC are binary compatible. So you should not have any problem. You can mix codes from both, uh, with both compilers. Any more questions? We probably have time for one more, so it might be the best question yet. It will have to fit into 45 seconds, including the answer. 42 seconds. So one thing, the, the <laughs> distribution is free. Of course, it's free. It's not open source. It's free. The MKL is not open source. It's our proprietary library. But the distribution will be free to download, free to use, and with community support. If you want premium support from Intel, you will have to pay. and. Uh, through the Intel Parallel Studio package. Great. Well, then, will you join me All in right. thanking Ralph? Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.